Hello and welcome to another packed edition of A Splash of Paint. Bursting with 60 colourful minutes of all the latest tips, demonstrations and exercises brought to you in association with the SAA, Society for All Artists. Let's get started and take a closer look at what inspirational projects are coming up on today's programme. Watercolour artist Louise Bogard returns to show how two simple colours can capture perhaps one of the most distinct and best known of all British birds, the robin. Terry Chip gets atmospheric with acrylics in today's Try Your Hand Out project. Henry Malt will be scouring the SAA reference library to recommend another great read. And Jeremy Ford shares another top tip to help give your paper the perfect finish. But before all that, let's have a look at how you can use two-point perspective to create an even more realistic composition. If you remember last week's tip, I mentioned single-point perspective was a good way of understanding the basics of perspective, but now we can go a bit further and use two-point perspective. Same basic rule, but the difference is this time it gives a much more realistic version of an object like a building. And uh, the difference between the two really, is the two points versus one point, but mainly what you do on a, a two-point perspective is use the corner is the first line you put in. So if you use an example of this, that would be a first line. And as the eye level or the person drops below, you see that all the lines come down to meet this point. And of course, as it goes up, the opposite thing happens. This line starts to go up towards the horizon line or the eye level. And again, we can draw this. But it starts off the same way a single point does. You put the horizon line across or the eye level. This is your eye level level with your eyes and I'm just going to put a couple of vanishing points either side there we go and the difference this time rather than drawing the actual rectangular block what we do is just put a single line on that line will be the corner and then what you do with this is you put the vanishing points the guidelines towards the vanishing points both of them so if we work from both sides You've not got to go all the way to the point, as long as you use the ruler as a pivot and just very, very gently marking these points. There we go. Now this gives a much more realistic building effect or anything with a definite structure. And then what we do then is we put in the two parallel sides of this cube, this block, and then we come back to the ruler and we take the two points that are now exposed towards the vanishing points. So this one goes off to the one on the right and that one goes off to the one on the left. Then straight away you can see that 3D object. Same below. It's something to practice. I don't think that anyone needs to learn every part of perspective but I think it's a good thing to practice because it gives you the understanding the way angles actually go. And if we just outline these just so you can see exactly what we're talking about. You can see there how that's made a three-dimensional cube. And again, if the light was up there, there's the sun coming down. That side would be dark, and that side would be a fraction lighter. And the same on the one below, that would be the darkest side, and the piece on the top would be lit, and the piece on the side would catch a little bit, so just a fraction darker. And you can see there how it's made the cubes. And just to take this a step further, if you was doing the real world a house, if we put the corner line of the building there and do the vanishing point guidelines above and below, see how the line above the horizon comes down, the one below goes up to it. And then we'll do the same for this. And then we can very quickly put in the two sides of the building. And also what you do at this point is you would pop in the actual roof, the apex, which is always central. And then that comes down to meet the left-hand vanishing point. And there you go, you can see the basic structure of a building. Now hopefully folks, that explains two-point perspective. It's well worth practicing. Two point perspective simply uses two vanishing points connected by a horizontal line, perfect for giving your composition its depth and a three dimensional quality. Now it's time to welcome back to the Splashy Paint Studio SA professional artist Louise Bogard as she shows how two simple colours can combine to capture perhaps one of the most distinctive and best known of all 
British Birds the Robin. Hello, today I'm going to show you how to paint a robin using just two colours. I'm using translucent orange and mauve, both made by um, Aquarelle Schminky Make. Now, I've sketched it out already, and all I'm going to do is paint clean water all over the little robin. Actually, I'm going to leave the eye out, so let's get cracking. I've got a fairly small brush, although it is a sable because it holds so much more fluid, and I want to make sure I get the entire area wet before I put any pigment on, as I say, other than the eye. I want to keep the eye as um, soft as possible to start with, and then I'm going to make it very, very dark. Right, just duck down a little bit. Have I got all of that nice and wet? Yep. Right, straight into a mix. I've mixed both the mauve and the orange together and I've got a real strong dark but I've then taken a brush full of that and added quite a lot of water. Now when you mix purple and mauve, which probably you know through causing uh, having little accidents, you get a gorgeous sort of muddy brown. Well I want some muddy brown to suggest some of the lighter feathers at the bottom of the robin. So tickling some pigment into that bottom area of the robin maybe around there. If you use the edge of your brush, just the real tip of the brush, you can get some feather-like effect. And I will go over his wing and into the tail, but just a tiny little bit. And some right on the top of his head. And clean my brush. Take off a lot of the moisture, and I'm going straight into a very diluted mix of the translucent orange. Which I might go just a tiny bit thicker having said that. The robin's breast is really bright and cheerful, so let's get that in straight away. Again, using the tip of your brush, you can suggest some feathers. And their, their breast feathers are sort of in two, two sections, so you've got to make sure that you get that area in. And it also doesn't matter if you go over the beak, because the beak will be a lot darker at the end, and it goes... The orange goes right over the top of the head. He's got a little brow, picking up a little bit more, beginning to run out. Around the eye, so try and keep that dry at the moment. Brush that down. If you get some dry brush marks, all the better. So it helps give that lovely feather effect. And just move them around a little bit with your brush. You can very quickly get a, a very interesting feather mark, suggesting some of the orange into the wing and the tail. Clean my brush, take off as much moisture as possible, and then going into my mix of both the colours, the mauve and the translucent orange. I'm taking off as much as I've put on because I want to be able to control this as much as I possibly can. So I've got the start, I've got the base of my robin. Now I need to go back to the top of its head and just with the tip of my brush, I'm literally sort of feathering in, literally <laughs> feathering in some darker marks. And I want to suggest where the wing's going to be, so I'm doing a big brush mark there. I've got some dry brush marks there. I'll utilise those, make use of them. Giving some structure to his tail. Touch of colour in the the wing that's folded here. Clean my brush because I want to have a little more control now. And encourage these pigments around a little bit more. Picking up just a little bit more of the dark colour. And I'm going to paint around his eye. Makes the eye stand out even more. And down. And finally, I need to do the eye itself. This takes a steady hand. And what's really, really useful to do is to try and leave a tiny little white dot in the middle if you can. So pop some pigment in there. If it does bleed a little bit into the other colours, it doesn't matter too much because you've got a wet and wet robin going on anyway. And a quick brush mark for the beak. And Bob's your uncle. There's your gorgeous little Christmas robin. But you can continue fiddling with to your heart's content.
To do the legs, all you need to do is have a tiny little bit of the brown on and a very quick mark. Try and suggest some feathers around the tops of the legs. And uh, their little feet have got little claws on them, so it's interesting to pop that in as well if you can. Tiny little bit. And a sweep across the bottom. All I've done is added water to that brush that had the brown in. A sweep across the bottom. And there it is. Standing on the ground, about to find a worm. That's my little robin using just two colours. I hope you've had some fun like I have. See you soon. Lovely little project there, Louise. Why don't you have a go at painting your own adorable robin redbreast? They're always such a cheerful sight. Well, folks, it's time for us to take a short break now, but join us in part two when versatile SAA professional artist Terry Chip drops into the Splashy Paint Studio to demonstrate how to get atmospheric with acrylics in today's Try Your Hand Up project. I'll see you soon.